Boo yeah! Hey guys, it's Mark Shea here. You're watching another episode of Exploring Australia. I was asked to review a little bit more gear, so I thought, why not? You ready? Check it out! Rev it up, pay the toll. Follow in the wild line to free our soul. The UHS 125, we got a combo. Yeah, guys, I'm back outside to do another review. Um, there's a bit of cloud around, so expect to see the light and dark as the clouds go over the sun i'll try and fix it up as much as i can but no again you have to deal with it just as well as the background noise anyway so what am i doing today well i'm reviewing the Oztrail seascape dome it's a 10-man tent this is what we personally use when we go car camping now the reason why i'm doing this video is because um i did a review on the v uh, the 6v the six-man tent that Oztrail have and i was asked about if it would do a family and yeah you know it could but if you're doing car camping uh, you want to have a bit of comfort you know and I'm going to show you the reasons why you know we you know there's only two of us me and Vanessa and we use a 10 man tent why because it's not much difference in size um, but it's a lot more comfortable you can you got a lot more room to play with and if the weather turns bad you got a little house so let's have a look at the tent that we're going to be reviewing so this is the seascape dome by Austral. it's a 10-man tent it's 195 centimeters high so you can stand up in it if you're nice and tall and you're gonna see that when I set it up it's 12.3 kilos in weight and it's 69 by 28 by 28 centimeters in its compacted form now what you will notice here is there's some tarp poles or tent poles that you whatever you want to call them um, these are not included but you can get them pretty cheap uh, from you know anywhere that sells tarps and that and i'll show you what they're for because as you can see by the picture here you've got a little flap that comes out like a little veranda <laughs> um, little pergola and the poles are there and they're not included because you don't really need them you can just roll up that which I'll show you so let's get started oh before I do that let's compare it now this is a three-man tent a three-man tent that we got it's a Ruffet R1V Dome 3 and it's very similar to the v6 or 6v that i reviewed um it's a tiny bit smaller not much but as you can see when compared side by side okay you're looking at it it's like oh but that's half the size in a car it's not that big of a difference um now the 6v is like half way between the two so if you're looking at the 6V and thinking about it and you saw how small that is really you're going to see the big difference when you see it the 10 man tent the seascape set up and you're going to see why it's actually you might as well get something like this because really there's not a lot of difference in size when you're packing a car so let's get going and we'll set it up and you can see the seascape dome
Okay, so as you can see from the time lapse, I did it really quick. So just like all the others, there are Velcro points to attach the fly to the framework. Um, yeah, so I just haven't done that just as for speed. And I just wanted to give you a look around it. So you can see what the poles do. They give you a little bit of a shelter over the door. Um, we'll be going over a lot more. So what I tend to do is I put a little rubber mat down the front so that way if it is rainy or muddy you can just take your shoes off there and then go in without dirtying the inside. So there's a little hack for you. <laughs> I've got a little mat that I can do that with. Now with this setup, um, the only thing is, is at night you really don't, if it's going to be cold, you do not want to leave this up like this at night because as you can see in here, and let me just lighten this up a bit. There's the fly mesh. So the cold can get in. Now it doesn't take long to set up at all. Let me just bring this back down so I can take you outside. Now this is a very, very large tent. You know, well it's 10 man tent. So this is what the back looks like. So you do have a window here that will unzip and you can tie up here, roll up so you have your standard windows and on the side as well. So we keep coming around. There's your window on the side. So there's plenty of ventilation and we have had no trouble with condensation so far. So this is what the outside of the tent looks like. So now I'm trying to make this so it's not so long. I know I sort of ramble on at times. So now let's go inside. Okay. So lighten things up a little. We unzip, the door has a fly mesh and a door, so you can unzip and just have it way open so you've got plenty of space. So here, I'm zoomed out as far as I can go, so bear with me. Brighten up a little bit more. So here we are in the center room. That's taking you around back to the front door. So what do the rooms look like? We unzip. Ugh. And there is room one. As you can see over here, you got a pocket here. You have a pocket here. You have a tab up here that you can hang something off of if you want to. And got another one over here. So they do have some tabs that you can hang things off of. So I am way at the other end of the tent. As you can see, I'm all squished up. And I'm still standing up. So I come forward. So I could have made this a bit tighter. Um, you know, especially when the rain flies start attaches up. But here, I'm standing up in the room. So I can get changed in here nice and comfortably. There's enough room here for a large double bed, queen bed. So we actually use a queen bed in here. It takes up the whole room, which means we tend to change in there. But the bed doesn't touch the walls and everything else. So this middle section is more like uh, probably half. So I think the way they do it is four in the way they judge it out as far as 10 man is four in that room four in that room and two in this room so this room's like half the size of the main quarters so then you come over here and we have the second room which has the same thing so and I'm back over here so now let's have a look 
that's how it looks like in here. So I'm saying so a lot again. <laughs> But it, this is an awesome tent. So the idea is we normally have our bed over there. This part is if, uh, well, storage if we want to. Um, and it, we can cook in the rain. So we got a little room that we can do stuff when it's raining. And then this room here would be for if we had anybody else with us. Or we use this room as storage. So that way it keeps the middle section clear to do whatever we want. So we throw all our gear in this room. We do our living stuff here, and that is our bedroom right there. So, of course, I gotta do the lay down test. Ugh. So, okay, and I'm saying so. Why am I saying so so much? Okay. So, there's the feet. Now, I'm not gonna move, I'm gonna lay down, and I'm gonna come around. So, expect some ugly double chin stuff as you're coming around to see me. Oh, go down. Ah, hello. And look how much room I got. Ooh, I can put my hands above my head. So you can see how a mattress, you can see how a mattress fits in here easy. And it does have some room that you can put more gear in. So this is just absolutely huge. And you're thinking, why would you want such a big tent? Now, if you got a family of four, this is ideal, right? Or a family of five. And like I said, there's not much difference in size in the pack down between the 10 man tent and the six man tent. Ah, you're back to me. So, I was just trying to get me in focus. So that is, it's about comfort. If you're going car camping, you're not going too far from the car, are you? This tent isn't that heavy. If you were hiking, obviously you wouldn't do it, but you know, the three man tent that I showed you is three kilos, three and a half kilos. So that would be ideal for if you wanted to take a big enough tent for two people to sleep in and hike and then split it up. But three kilos for a tent is pretty heavy for hiking. But here for car camping, if you're gonna do that, there's not a lot of difference in the price between like six man tent and 10 man tents. It just comes down to what brand you want, what quality you want, and that sort of stuff. So if you're looking for a budget, you can get one of these tents pretty, pretty reasonable. Um, I, we've had this for a little while, so I can't quite remember exactly how much we paid for it. <laughs> but I know you can get some just in like under $200. Um, is just have a look around. Uh, the thing, reason why I wanted the dome tent, because Vanessa was looking at square tents. Now, dome tents, I feel, deal with the wind better, especially if you go to camping in high wind areas. But I'm just gonna sit here, and you can see all the way down there. So here's the room. I've spun around, so that's where the door is. Woo it's just one, well, it's three big rooms. Um, and it gives a bit of privacy. This is what we take when we go car camping, and, and this is our sort of like base of operations. Now, we it, depending on where we go, if we're gonna go for a few days, um, we'll actually take the gazebo as well. So we're taking our, you know, we're, we're mindful of other campers as well, but we do take this as our living quarters, and we take a gazebo with walls. Um, I'm not sure if you've seen it, if I've shot any in other videos, but, um, we take a gazebo with walls that we use as our cook area. So that way if it is cooking, like you can cook in here, there's no drama. Um, I've had a number of 10 man tents. Uh, if I, when I go to festivals and that, um, like Tamworth, when I would tent it, cause like the last few years I went in a van that was decked out with a bed in it and I put the gazebo up against the van. Now, um, when I would go to Tamworth before and tent, I would actually take a 10 man tent and I'd have all my gear in one, I'd have a bedroom and if it did rain, you know, because I was there for a, a couple of weeks. So it was like a home base and that was just me on my own. So it just comes down to what are you after and that, but I was asked about the family situation and I think this would be ideal for a family of four, maybe five. The kids are over there, parents have a bit of privacy 
and you got a room that you can do other stuff with. Now this is where, you know, you don't have to keep stuff in your car as much. Um, I was asked about the 6V and that, if you were gonna sleep in that for a family, all you'd do is sleep in it. You wouldn't put gear in it. You'd leave the gear in the car and just run back and forth to the car when you needed stuff. This tent is huge, but it's comfortable, especially if you're gonna go camping for a few days. And as you saw, this thing takes like 10 minutes to set up. All right, so a lot of these, once, once you get the hang of it, it don't take long. It don't take long. <laughs> it doesn't take long um, to set up at all. Now I can pop this up in 10 minutes um, if I'm really booking it, or if I'm just taking my time, it's like 15 minutes. Um, I can do it quicker if I need to, if I'm really rushing. Uh, so it's not a hassle. As you, um, I don't know if I'll leave it in the time lapse, but if I did, you would have seen the fly. Getting the fly up on your own can be tricky, but you get you get little systems on how to do that. Um, so if you're not looking at hiking and you're looking at car camping, I always say go big, you know, be comfortable when you're camping. Um, you can always work out how to set it up. You know, that was like when you saw the 6V, I wasn't helping Bruce because that was his tent. It was his first time and he has to learn if he's going to camp to um, set it up on his own because not, there's not always people around. So this isn't a tent that has to be done by more than one person. You can do it pretty easy in really quick time. So why not have some comfort? You would have seen in um, the hiking videos, my little Nomad 2 tent is pretty low to the ground. And that's a bit of a pain in the ass, and I, you know, but it does its job and I can carry it for long distances. If I've got a car, I don't want to be changing over like this and bent over and that. So I always recommend people get a tent they can stand up in. And that was one thing I told Bruce, that's why he got the 6V, because it is quite high. So if you're going to be changing clothes and things like that, you want comfort, you don't want to end up with a sore back just by trying to change your clothes. So this is my recommendation for anybody with a family. Like I said, there's two of us and we get camping all the time in this. It ain't a hassle. If we don't want to take the gazebo, then we've got an area that we can cook and clean and do all sorts of stuff in. We have a little bit of a veranda outside that we can sit out and just have a little bit of shade without being in the heat of the tent. That's another reason for the gazebo because you can put up the walls and just still be out of the sun. Um, but yeah, if you're car camping, I say go big if you can. You know, if all you can afford is a $20 tent, that's a tiny little thing, sure. Um, but if you can, Get a you know for one to three hundred dollars, get a tent that you can stand up in, be comfortable, and has plenty of room to do what you want to do. Let me know in the comments what you think. Is it like oh my god, that's so overkill? Yeah, but I'll be more comfortable than you when we're camping next to each other. <laughs> but that's true. Uh, you know we camp next to people, and they're bending over to get in. They got to grab stuff. They got to change outside, or they got to get in, lay down, and change while they're laying down, and all that. Got no problem here. You can set up a bag of clothes on the ground, just pull out your clothes, get changed, it's just like being at home. Another reason for a tent like this, if, you, if you're if ca car camping, then there's not an issue with transporting it, right? Because like I said, this is 12 kilos, so it is pretty weighty. But if it the weather turns sour and you gotta be in your tent for a while, would you rather be in something like this while it's pouring down rain and storming or would you want to be in a tiny little tent that you can hardly move think about it so it comes down to what your needs are and like i said for a family of four like what i was asked about um this is my recommendation i hope you enjoyed the video if you did come on guys hit like it helps with the algorithm and also don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell because I know most of you guys that watch these videos aren't subscribed, I've seen the analytics, and it just helps the channel grow, and I can do more with it. So if you've really enjoyed this, subscribe, hell out the channel, I'll do more, just tell me in the comments what more you wanna see. And as always, I gotta have a shout out for Conceptual Creative, because they just help me so much to do these videos and that, and if you need a website design, 
or web hosting or any of that sort of stuff, they can help you out there. So check them out in the links below um, and send them some love because they help me do this. Even if you go and say, hey, Marche sent me, you guys look like you're doing an awesome job. <laughs> anyway, guys, I'm Mark Shea. I hope you've enjoyed the video. This is Exploring Australia Gear Review Edition. And I'll see you next time. Yeah, that's pretty boring, eh? See ya! So, yeah. So, yeah, I'm doing that a lot lately. I gotta stop that. If you're trying to do 10 people, well, unless you're on a survival thing, a, fight, a survival exhibition, oh, exhibition, Ex uh, excursion?